the Mother Crystal. She worked tirelessly as the protector of the star. She sought out suitable champions to defend the realm against those who would see it destroyed. That very mission means Hydaelyn is an absolute force for good, right? Hydaelyn has been leading the Warrior of Light in Final Fantasy XIV since the very beginning. Now her motives weren't always clear, but now we have a pretty complete picture of Hydaelyn and her creator. Let's talk about Vana and the difficult decision she made to give humanity another chance. But first, a giant crystal sized spoiler alert for the Endwalker story. I hope you enjoy. Vena is one of the ancients we meet during our trip to Elpis in the past. She had a reputation as a talented scholar and adventurer. We can also deduce that she's a very skilled fighter. She spars with the Warrior of Light and easily holds her own. She's also considered an all-rounder in the game's trust system, meaning she could participate as a tank, damage dealer, or healer. Now, Vana used to be on the Convocation of Fourteen, the council tasked with protecting the planet of Atheris and keeping society in order. She held the seat of Asm, a position referred to as the Traveler. This seat is tasked with exploring the larger world of Atheris and becoming intimate with its people and cultures. Asm is just a title, like Emmet Selk, Van Daniel, and Elidibus. Vanag gives up that seat for her successor, who was a close friend and student. For ancient society, this usually means that an individual's purpose has been fulfilled, and they can now pass on to the ethereal sea. Medion refers to this as death, but the ancient Hithlidea says that's not the word they use. Regardless, rejoining the Ethereal Sea is what happens when someone dies. But Vana is unique in that she chooses to continue living. Emmet Selk mentions that Vana believes she had more to offer mankind even after her time on the Convocation. You can tell by his tone he doesn't agree with her decision. So Vana wears a white ancient robe now instead of the black one to symbolize her new role as a counselor. Everything we know about Vana at this point in the story are heroic details. We know she's intelligent, compassionate, courageous, and innovative, the kind of person that ancient society would find valuable. That's why she earned her seat. It's in that position that sends Vana as an ambassador for the ancients, meeting all sorts of creatures and civilizations. She even has a trusty steed in her dog Argos. These are stereotypical heroic qualities, but let's dig a little deeper. I do not believe we have ever met, yet I sense my magic upon you. Therefore, if I wove the enchantment, I could only have done so at a later point in time. Vana assists Emmet Selk, Hermes, and Hithlidaeus with various tasks in Alpus. That's where she started working after retirement. This is where she meets the Warrior of Light for the first time. She, like the others, immediately recognizes a connection with the current Asm. That's because our warrior is a sundered piece of Asm's soul, though our character is the only one aware of that at the time. She also recognizes one of her own blessings on the warrior despite having never met us before. This allows her to figure out that the warrior is from the future. Not knowing the precise details of the first final days, it is difficult to determine the veracity of the tale. Supposing it is all true, I must ask myself why I would do what I did. Why would I feel I had no recourse but to oppose the Fourteen and create this Hydaelyn? Circumstances change, of course, but it would not have been an easy decision regardless. Vana is also involved in confronting Hermes and his creation, Medion. The latter is the harbinger of the final days, a cataclysmic event that would end all life on Atheris and put other stars at risk of the same fate. When Medion's sisters began to report their findings about other life in the universe, Medion's individuality begins to wane, and she tried to flee to prevent Hermes from hearing that report. So Vana, the warrior, Emmet Selk, and Hithlidaeus go after and eventually corner her, but the report carried on, revealing that all the media had discovered were dead worlds, or worlds on the brink of death due to failed experiments, war, or other tragedies. As such, driven by their creator's question, they concluded that life is suffering and despair, and it is in the best interest of everything living to surrender to the inevitable. Go watch my Hermes and Medion videos to learn more about them. 
This is the moment when Hermes vows to protect Medion and whisks her away to Catasis Hyperborea. The warrior Vena, Emmett Selk, and Hithlidaeus confront Hermes atop the research facility. Unfortunately, they can't stop Medion from delivering her report, and Hermes wants to conduct one final experiment. Let mankind try to stop the final days. If they fail, they weren't worthy of living in the first place. He chains the party with magic and summons Kairos, a memory reconfiguration system to erase the memories of everyone involved. Fana is the first person to break free and tries to chase Medion with Argos, but she couldn't catch her in time. All she manages to do is throw a tracking spell on Medion. Kairos activates, but Vana and the warrior escape, thanks to Hithlidaeus and Emmet Selk's help. They are now the only two with the knowledge of the final days on Atheris. May you and yours emerge triumphant. Make use of the knowledge you have gained, that your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. Vana escorts the warrior back to the portal they came through. They have a long talk about how to protect Atheris from that threat. She believes no one else can know about the media's report, otherwise the star could suffer the same fate that the research civilizations did. This might drive people to madness, which does make sense. The next part of her plan has a few problems. She suggests that normally she'd consult with the Convocation for help, but entertains the possibility that if Hermes learned of what he did before erasing his memories, that it might drive him insane, and there's no telling what he'd do. This doesn't make much sense, considering she saw Hermes descent into madness in a very short stretch of time. He's already mentally fragile. Hermes having a breakdown isn't an if, it's a win. She also shuts down the possibility of alienating Hermes from the convocation because his brilliant mind is too great to lose. He also needs to be the one to determine the path to Zodiac. That's to make sure the time loop closes. So ultimately, she decides to let Hermes' rules stand for this impending apocalypse, promising to inform only a small circle of followers she can trust. The rest is up to the warrior. And even though this plan has several holes, she places her faith in us, believing we'll find a way to win in the present. We see glimpses of Vana's future through a metaphorical vision as we travel through time once more. The way these events are shown to us isn't the literal way they unfold. Hermes takes the seat of Fan Daniel. Blasphemies begin ravaging Atheris with no end in sight. Fan Daniel determines the force bringing them is made of Dynamis, the energy source that reacts to strong emotions. He theorizes that a strong amount of Aether could prevent the Dynamis from affecting Atheris. So the Convocation makes plans to summon the Dark Primal Zodiac and use his overwhelming force to keep the final days at bay. It will come at a terrible price, a sacrifice of half of the star's population. So many lives are lost, but it works. Zodiac does keep the final days from reaching the star. The Convocation's decision is a controversial one that eventually splits the ancient society into different factions, the ones supporting Zodiac's plan and those loyal to Vana. Her successor, the new Asm, is approached by Emmet Selk to join the side of Zodiac, but he refuses. Talks of another sacrifice begin. Atheris is in ruins from the blasphemies ravaging the star. They need to restore it to the way it used to be so another half of the population would need to be culled. This decision is left with much more resistance than the first, but the convocation is calling the shots, so the second sacrifice to Zodiac happens. Aetherius' landscape is back to the way it used to be, but so many ancients are gone for Zodiac to work his dark magics. Talks of a third sacrifice begin, one that would offer up the lives of new, lesser races that have emerged since the final days were stopped. Stopped. This would restore the ancients that are gone. Vana approaches Asm to ask them to join in her cause, but he never gives her an answer. Time is not on her side. The heart of Zodiac, Elidibus, leaves the primal to try to sort out the conflict among the ancients. Vana knows the convocation will choose another sacrifice, so she makes a choice that changes the course of our star 
forever. Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose. My love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential, in his ability to find a way forward. Her and her followers summon the light primal Hydaelyn to oppose Zodiark, Vana becoming the primal's core. She uses the great power she wields now to sunder Atheris, cleaving the star and everyone on it into 14 pieces. I say everyone, but there are three exceptions. We'll save their stories for future videos. This decision has drastic ramifications for the people on Atheris. Everyone is now just a small piece of their former selves. The star has many reflections. Think of them as parallel worlds, not as separate universes. The pieces of the soul sundered are eventually reborn as new people. These pieces may share characteristics of their original form, but they are different people living in different circumstances. The landscape of the original Atheris has changed dramatically since this event. It's said that roughly 12,000 years have passed since the sundering and the present. Seven calamities have happened since that time, six of which we know were on a scale that wiped out the civilizations of that time. Seven calamities means the destruction of seven shards of Atheris. There's a few other details we know about that time, but much of it is still unclear. But what is clear is that Vana made a decision that tore people, civilizations, an entire world into pieces. Countless lives change, some no doubt for the worse. A great deal of suffering stems from Vana's actions. You can argue that her decision to sunder the world was just as callous as the convocations to summon Zodiark. So with all of this knowledge, why did she summon Hydaelyn to sunder the world? We recently received an answer from the game's director, Naoki Yoshida. He answered this question as part of February 2022's live letter. A viewer asked, was Vana sundering the star the only way to save it? Yoshida consulted with Naoto Ishikawa, one of the game's writers. They remind us that Yashtola was right. She theorized that the ancients were so dense in Aether that they couldn't control Dynamis. That's the energy source behind the Song of Oblivion. And that's why other ancients saw Zodiark as the only way to stop it. But Bana saw a different problem in most ancients, their hubris. She believed if they were unable to change as people that it would be their own undoing anyway. Remember the final portion of the Dead Ends dungeon? That society's misplaced faith caused them to beg a deity they worshipped to bring them the sweet release of death. Perhaps Vana feared a similar fate for the ancients if they didn't change. It's these reasons that Yoshida says drove Vana to sunder the star. Vana herself even says it wasn't a just decision and that she agonizes greatly over the suffering she caused. But that decision to sunder humanity is what led to the star securing a future. There's a lot of similarities here between Vana's decision and Emmett Selk's judgment of humanity at the end of Shadowbringers. It's the courage to make this difficult decision that really adds depth to her character. That combined with her heroism and kindness, it's easy to see why followers would flock to her back in ancient times. No one else could have fulfilled her role. And amidst it all are people, beacons of light and life, laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose, my love. And so long as they need help, I cannot return to the star. Perhaps my future self is still waiting for it. 
So what do you think of Vanaz's story? Do you believe Endwalker gave her a fitting conclusion? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy lore discussions like this one for Final Fantasy XIV. I'm always taking suggestions for future videos. Until then, take care, warriors, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.